Bandai Namco says Elden Ring is just the beginning. What the fuck does that even mean? You guys are like eight Souls games in. You sure? I would totally watch a Dark Fantasy Elden Ring. No, you can't do that. Never mind. That makes no fucking sense. They can't adapt Elden Ring to TV show and movie. It doesn't make sense. There's like 10 fucking dialogue lines. There's not a lot of talking. A lot of it is just visual and then subtleties. I don't know how they would even do that. A lot of the show would be like stare, like it would have to be a cinematic. It would have to be like Dune where it's like a lot of beauty in ridiculously beautiful shots. Like long, like Blade Runner. It needs to be like fucking Blade Runner where it's like very atmospheric, very cinematic. And you're taking in more visual over the dialogue, which is not much. But I don't ever see that happening. I hope they never do that. They're going to have Dwayne Johnson as the fucking... No, bro. As the Tarnished? No. He's going to stop fucking being buff for this role. Oh my god. I hope they never do that. I don't I don't see it. I feel like Elden Ring is that wouldn't even make sense. Uh-uh. That, that no. That's actually that's cursed if they make it into a TV show and movie. Uh-uh. Leave it as a video game. But I was just thinking, European CEO Arnaud Muller on the publisher's growing Japan profile, IP creation and staying platform agnostic in the face of consolidation. Okay, this guy is the CEO. European CEO on the publisher's growing Japan portfolio. Motherfucker, why would he not say Elden Ring is just the beginning? He knows this shit was fucking successful. He's the fucking CEO. He's growing the Japan portfolio. Of course he's gonna say it's just the beginning. He's not gonna be quoted like, uh, Elden Ring is basically all we have. <clears throat> of course. For a few years now, conversation on this very site about Bandai Namco have been... This is just like, why the fuck would he not? Obviously, he would say this. For a few years, conversations on this very site about Bandai Namco have been revolving around the company's desire to crack the West via its European branch. Its strategy to focus on new IP and to work with the biggest independent studios. This year, our conversation with Bandai Namco Europe CEO Arnaud Muller at Gamescom felt like all this was coming together, underlined by the massive success across Western markets of Elden Ring. I mean, don't all fucking Souls games do well on Western markets? So, like, what am I missing here? The From Software developed hit is currently 2022's best-selling title across Europe, ahead of FIFA 22, um, or Pokemon? Wait, why or Pokemon? Am I reading this wrong? Isn't it and? As of June 2022, it has, has sold 16.6 million units globally and is Bandai Namco's fastest selling game of all time. Jeez. We already knew that though. It took Elden Ring only three weeks to reach 12 million copies shifted. As a comparison, it took Dark Souls 3 over four years to sell t uh, 10 million units. Holy fuck. That's crazy. Elden Ring, that's fucking insane. Elden Ring tapped so many new people. That's fucking crazy, man. Its success wasn't exactly a surprise, but the scope of it did take the industry by storm. When asking Muller what the success of Elden Ring means for Bandai Namco and whether the publisher's Western ambition... I'm curious, actually, what the completion rate of Elden Ring is. I would bet that most people did not beat the game. You know? I would, I would honestly say it's not that high. It's a pretty fucking hardcore game to get into. And if you don't understand or if you've never played a Souls game, you're going to get your ass fucking destroyed. How many people, most people think that the, the boss, the Erd Tree motherfucker with the shield, most people don't think to run past him. No. Most people who play video games are like, oh my god, I have to beat him in order to continue the game. I bet majority of people... No, I want to see the percentage. Is there an achievement thing? 952,000 peak. Is there an achie <laughs> achievement that says how many people beat that guy? Do you get an achievement for killing him? So it'd be funny to see how many people... Some people probably quit after that motherfucker because they could never beat him. 
I would I would love to see on Xbox and uh, PlayStation as well because I feel like I bet the big market that they tapped for the twelve mi million was more console over PC gamers. Maybe I'm wrong, but I bet the twelve million were more on the console side than on the Steam side. Um, so like I'm curious how many people actually killed him. What was his name? What was the achievement? I forgot. What the fuck was his name? Wasn't it a tree sentinel? Obtained all achievements. What does this mean, though? Do you get, uh, is this literally all achievements or is all achievements all the bosses? But then how many people discovered all the bosses? There's some bosses that are so fucking subtle. Is this literally 100%? This is literally 100%. Lord of Frenzied Flame. That's if you... Isn't this if you discover that really subtle area with the door? I never went through that door when I played the game. So I wouldn't have this achievement. This is if you go through the door. And I remember I accidentally discovered this area. And this was such a massive fucking area. Because the way you get down there was so weird. It was like you had to like properly fall on the fucking tombs. Or the gravestones. Yeah, you have to like hit the wall or some shit. Like, uh, this was very, very hidden. Acquired all legendary talismans. Anyone know? Oh, see, Dragon Lord plus Citasax. 26% found him. He was pretty hard to. This fight was so fucking sick. Probably the best fight in the game. This guy was so fucking hidden. Like, it was. You had to follow a specific path, and then didn't you have to like hide? Didn't you have to, like, do an emo or hit X on, like, a specific piece of stone to then get transported to his lair? And this is killed, so 26% of people killed him. You had to lie down, so you had to emo. Who the fuck would have known to do this? It tells you? Yeah, chat told me about this. True. Like, chat told me about this. I would have never known about it. It does tell you to do it. I feel like this is something, finding him was heavily motivated by people needing to look online. Chat, you guys are like a real-time strategy guide, though. You know, you guys are, you guys are gonna say shit like that, you know? So it's like, this is kind of, how many people naturally discovered Placida Sacks? Fucking barely anybody. Unless you were like fucking honed in, and it was like, oh my god, this is the first time I actually, this is the only time are one of the handful of times you actually had to use an emote in the game to get to a boss. There's no, there's like five times you use a fucking emote. You read the note. It wasn't an emote, you just press X. Oh, I thought it was an emote. Whatever though, it doesn't matter. This shit was so fucking hard to find. Mog the Omen, 34% killed. Well, she, Millennia is easy to find. You had... She's off the beaten path, but th the thing about Millennia too is there was so much fucking coverage on her and she was trending during the game that like, that's the other thing. If you didn't know where the fuck she was and you killed so many bosses and you're like, how have I not encountered her yet? Uh, so many people would have been like, you gotta go here, you gotta go here, and this is how you get to her. I don't think she's main story boss. You don't have to kill her. PlayStation trophies. Oh, it's published online, the trophies. All trophies is considered platinum on, uh, wait, 74,000 game owners. What? That doesn't make sense. You have to, like, register to this website or something? Yeah, I think this is more the people registered on PSN profiles. This isn't like Steam that doesn't matter. Horalu Malakath, 40%. Regal Ancestor, Shardbreaker Mog... What's the achievement? Is Age of the Star Age of the Stars? What is the achievement for the fucking final boss? I would say the final boss kind of sucked. Astel. No, it wasn't Astel. Elden Lord is finishing the game. I think yeah, the last boss kind of fucking sucked. The Age of Stars, the Elden Beast. Yeah, the Elden Beast was kind of potato. Ragadon, uh, uh, Radagon was the best. Radagon was cool. Horalu was cool. And then, like, he just looked like a weird fucking Pokemon. That was, like, kind of a weird mindfuck of, like, yeah, what the fuck is this random-ass shit that they made? 
you go from like re two really cool guys that it's like okay i understand how they're, they're part of it but i also get that it's like well he's like a the elden beast is like more of an entity all dark souls last bosses are meh uh-uh lord wasn't the lord of cinders fucking amazing Maliketh was cool. Like, Maliketh was fucking amazing. Oh, yeah, Gwyn as well. Yeah, dude, Cinder is insane. And then, uh, the Orphan of Koss or whatever in Bloodborne. I'm actually kind of impressed. Actually, 20% of people became Elden Lord. How many copies did this sell on Steam? That's not a lot. This game, this game's fucking hurts, though. You know, the problem with this game is, for a casual gamer, you can be like, oh my god, I'm going through, I'm owning, I'm owning, I've been playing for an hour, I didn't die, fuck me, where is the goddamn bonfire? And then some shit one-taps you, you lose all your fucking progress, and then you need to go again, and it's like, holy fuck, I suck getting here, and or whatever, uh, the light of grace... And then, yeah, most people are, are going to say, fuck this. Like, this game is definitely a lot more hardcore, but um, there's no achievement for killing the guy with the shield in the beginning of the game. Because I'm very curious how many people fucking quit, like, right then. I wouldn't be surprised if some people buy the game because of the hype and try it and then, like, get their asses kicked and just, like, give up. I feel like you see that a lot on console gamers. I would not be surprised. Just look up Margit. Oh yeah, true. Margit would be... I mean, 75% of people got to Margit. Shardbreaker Godric too. I mean, that's pretty impressive. You know? That's a shit ton of 25%. So like over a million players didn't kill Margit. If PC... How many... How many... How much did PC sell? Elden Ring PC sales. Lifetime. Elden Ring has sold, has sold, what the fuck? Oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. It was 12 million in the first three, Elden, three weeks for 12 million. Um, and then Elden Ring sold 10 million copies on PC. So, lol. 2.5 million people never killed the f first official boss. Uh, and that's probably, you know. That's 10 million on March 9th, 2022. So it's probably like maybe 12 million now, just on PC. So let's say 3 million people didn't kill the first boss of this game. That's not including pacifist runs. Buddy, no one plays this game the first time and decides to do a pacifist run. Like, that's such a, that's such a specific... No, who gives a shit? 3 million, basically. That's fucking crazy, bro. Radon. That was a cool fight. I mean, actually, Radon was cool. I see why the way his lore was, why the fight was the way it was. In a way, I kind of wish the fight was different. It was cool, but like, yeah, I kind of wish it was a different fight. Like, you go to his fucking lair, and he's sitting on like a huge throne. I don't know, man. Yeah, um, shit. Is that was exactly a surprise, but the scope of it did uh, take the industry by storm when asking Buller when the success of Elden Ring means for Bandai Namco and whether the publisher's Russian ambitions have now been achieved. The answer is level-headed. It's a global success, but it's not our first global success. He smiles, pointing to Tekken among many other successful ban Bandai Namco properties. Bro, Tekken at the end of the day is fucking niche to the FGC. Come on. How Tekken is popular, yes, but... He's just mentioning Tekken because that's the next massive hype game coming out. Tekken has sold a lot. Everyone buys Tekken. Am I wrong about this? Tekken was mainstream for a long time. Don't get me wrong. I like Tekken. I know it's been around for a long fucking time. But I'm looking forward to the next Tekken. It looks sick. I mean, I guess so. We're extremely proud of Elden Ring in the latest numbers. 16.5 million sales is in quite a short period of time. Miller continues, we're very proud of the quality of the games. We're very happy with the relationship with From Software. We worked with From Software in the Dark Souls series, but Elden Ring has taken the genre to a new level. The open world, the accessibility of the game, the depth, it clearly has surpassed our expectations and also fans' expectations. 
I've also barely ever loaded up the game. It's a great success. I think we anticipated that the game was going to be a very high quality game, but the fact that it touched such a large audience is extremely pleasing and we're very happy. Dark Souls has always been perceived as a difficult series and Elden Ring is a difficult game, but I think with the work we've done to explain properly to our fans the way they could discover this adventure, this new game has touched a larger audience as it has made it more accessible. It's a combination of the type of game it is and the positioning of it, and I think it worked very well. Muller does say Bandai Namco Europe is still pushing for a better presence in the West, but he is keen to show progress across the entire portfolio rather than pin success on one title. When you look at the games that we showed at Gamescom, uh, One Piece, um, Park Beyond from Limbic, which was invested in last year. That's the thing. Bandai Namco has so many fucking games they publish. It's ridiculous. Like, they even have the fucking Dark Picture series that they are published as well. Like, I don't know what I... It's kind of weird how they're trying to push into the Western audience. They have so many fucking games. <laughs> like... They're old. They have so many fucking games, a part of every single genre. Uh, we're very happy that they found this partnership with Nordisk. Nordisk previously invested in Supermassive. They got to know each other. Isn't Supermassive Hades dev? No, never mind. Who are the Hades devs? I forgot their name. They have access to Transmedia Approach until dawn. Oh, that's super giant. Uh. But they also probably got some funding capabilities so they can continue to create their own games. Back in 2018, Bankai, Bandai Namco's Europe SVP for Marketing Digital and Content, Hervé Hort, was sharing the firm's ambitions to have 50% of its games be new IP. Since then, he also shared his concerns over the impact of acquisitions on finding AAA partners. Oh yeah, and it's true that Bandai Namco has had a string of bad luck on that front with Little Nightmares developer Tarzier Studios acquired by Embracer. That's fucking awesome, man. We're in the credits of both games. And these guys, this studio was fucking acquired by Embracer. That's fucking awesome. I'm actually curious what this studio's next game is going to be. Are they going to do a Little Nightmares 3 or a new IP? Can you watch the Callisto Protocol? Uh, yeah, and then a bunch of other shit. Yeah, and then they also have this fucking game coming out too. Like, Bandai Namco's massive. Park Beyond that they showed off. It's like, bro, you guys literally touch every fucking genre, every single type of gamer. Uh, yeah, like, I think they're good there. God of War Ragnarok has been raided by the ESRB. The words fuck and shit are heard in the game. Oh, no. That's weird. You know who says this? The dwarves. Brock and his brother probably say fucking shit. I can't imagine Kratos saying fuck or shit. It's definitely Brock. Maybe, uh... Who's his brother? Yeah, Brock said swore in the game. I doubt, I doubt the kid says it. I doubt, you think Thor says fucking shit? Maybe. Sindri? Yeah, I see that way more. Horizon Zero Dawn PS5 remaster reportedly in the works alongside a multiplayer game. I mean, I guess that's cool. The multiplayer game is probably the biggest interest, you know? Remakes are everywhere. I hate uh, this trend of remastering recent games. Uh, yeah, I know, especially like Last of Us as well. I'm, I, I, it is odd. I think the thing is, they're getting so good at remastering, and the time it takes to remaster is so much lower, obviously, because they're just focusing purely on visual that it's like lucrative enough for them to, they need a smaller team, smaller team focused on way less things. And they make a solid amount of money. And it, it keeps the hits modern, quote unquote. Sony officially announced a Horizon series for Netflix. Oh my god. That's fucking weird. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Bro, we live in such odd times when everything's getting a fucking TV show. That's so weird. The Last of Us teaser was was good. I mean, it's from the guy who made Chernobyl, so yeah. Edge Runners was more of a very safe play. 
to transition or adapt your game to television. Last of Us has good names behind it, so that's like a hard hitter. Edge Runners is good, but it's more it's definitely way more of a safe play. It's like what, 8, 10, 11 episodes? You it's basically a 2 to 3 hour movie. Cuz it's like 15, 20 minute episodes. 10 10 episodes, 15, 20 minutes each. Like it's way safer than like a full on fucking production. Soulstone Survivors Early Access trailer. So like this game was fucking great. But from what I played to this early access trailer, has there been any updates other than new classes? Did you guys play this after I checked it out? Oh, there's a wizard now? This game's fun shit. But the problem with this game is that you hit a point. The problem with these fucking vampire survivor style games is they don't they stop when you have like an op build you use the op build for like 20 30 minutes and then you beat the game it's fucking annoying it's like they tease you it's like oh okay you're done great job it's like bro i want a fucking endless mode I want to take this op to the next fucking level. I want to like, okay, I am so OP now, this build is crazy. Don't hit me with the final wave. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep throwing so many fucking mobs on my screen till I get to 1 FPS. So many fucking mobs. Slightly increment them to keep getting harder by 1%, 1% a wave, whatever the fuck you would use to make them harder. More HP, more damage, whatever. And then I keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger till my haste is fucking broken. Till my fucking damage, like, you see, like, ridiculous. That's what you want to see with these games. Like, this game was awesome, but it's like, right when you kill the five Void Lords, it's like, all right, good job, man. Leave. It's like, okay. I wasn't, I wasn't done with that. Rogue Genesia has unlimited? Does it? I don't think so. I played it. When you hit the 30 minute mark, can you even get past the 30 minute mark? I was so fucking OP and then like literally got my ass kicked in like two seconds. 20 minutes till dawn is well made, but I think it's one of the more boring vampire survivor style games.